In today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Chris Woodruff and I continue talking about Web API. And we're going to look at something that's brand new in ASP.NET Core, and that is integration testing. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Chris Woodruff. Hey, Chris. Hey, Robert. This is part two of our three-part yep, for now, for now series on building web APIs. Yeah. So in part one, we built a web API. It yep. turned out to be pretty straightforward. Yep. Awesomely. And then today we're going to talk about integration testing. Yeah. So we're going to be using ASP.NET Core mm -hmm. Web API. And we're going to use a different kind of testing. So lots of people know about unit testing. Yep. Testing internal components and internal parts of your of your uh, solution or projects. Yep, and I did a, a four-part series. It turned out with Filter Pixie awesome. on that, um, which may or may not <laughs> have been published by the time this episode got published. Um, I, I did done a bunch of recording last week because VS Live was in town, so yeah. I got Phil and some others in awesome. here, and then we're doing a bunch here, yeah. and then I'll figure out when to publish. Oh, it. that's so awesome! If the Phil one has started, um, then go watch that. If not, then watch it when it's out. And either yeah. way, I'll put links um, in this episode to yeah. that one, or people can go yeah. find it. Phil's but, a great so that's guy. unit testing, and that would be testing the code that you wrote inside the Web yes. API, which of course you need to do. Um, but we're doing a different type of testing here. Yeah, so we're actually going to be testing our the actual APIs that we build. Okay. So uh, in the previous episode, I built an API that had uh, two entity types mm -hmm. that we were building APIs against, uh, albums and artists. Right. We were using the Chinook database demo database that mm -hmm. Microsoft created some years ago that I use for all my demos. Okay. Well, that and my baseball database. Right. Um, but the baseball database is a little complex. That thing is gigantic. It is. It's fun, <laughs> though. But we're going to use Chinook. We're just going to take what we had, the project that we had from part one, and we're going to use it for this mm -hmm. to build integration tests. And we're actually, like I said, we're going to actually hit our APIs. And we're going to call a use a uh, HTTP call mm -hmm. with a verb, and then we're going to get a response back, and we're going to make sure that that response and the response code is what we expect. Okay. And if we if it comes back as expected, the integration test passes. Okay. And if it doesn't. It fails. So now, this is integration testing. So the unit testing would be inside the web API. Yeah. Um, and now we're saying that if from a client you call the web API, do you get the right stuff back? That's more that's an integration yeah. test. So I think you should test external. I, I agree internal. with that statement. You should test. You should test. <laughs> you should test yeah. over and over again. Yep. And uh, but we're going to be leveraging and using the exact same coding styles that you would use okay. for internal unit tests. So we're going to use XUnit yep. for this. Okay. So we're not. So you'll probably look at this and go, "It looks just like my unit tests that I build every day." Cool. And it's like, "Yep, it does. It just tests different things." Right. All right. And we'll explain. Sweet. Okay. So you can see I've got my application. I've got Visual Studio running, and it's. Uh, has a project in here called Chinook Core API. And this is the one we built in the last episode. Yep. Same exact code. And so what we want to do is create an additional project on, on this solution. So we're going to say add new project. And then we're going to come in and under .NET Core, we're going to say XUnit test project. Now, you can use MS test. I like XUnit mm -hmm. myself. Uh, and in here, we're going to give it a name. And I'm going to, uh, I like to give my, my tests the same name that I give the projects that they're testing. So I'm going to say Chinook Core API dot, and for this, I'm going to do integration testing okay. or integration tests. Because I will set up two projects 
against a, a uh, API, against a uh, web API project. Mm -hmm. I will set up a uh, integration project, integration testing project, and I'll set up a traditional uh, unit testing project. Okay. Because I want to test both right. sides. Good. Got it. So, so for this, I just call it, and you can name it whatever you want. I just call it the name of the project I'm testing dot integration tests. And we're going to say there, it will stand up that uh, new project and pull in all the dependencies. Uh, the first thing you want to do is say uh, add reference and then we want to allow so it pulled down x unit for you yeah and i'll okay. show the i'll show the new get packages mm -hmm. in a sec because we have to install some additional new get packages okay but we want this integration testing to have a reference back to the to what it's testing sure. right so right. we just need to give it that reference uh, so that it knows what projects it has reference to so we say uh, that this integration test is going to have a reference back to the Chinook Core API. And if I open up the dependencies in NuGet, you can see that we have a number of different uh, NuGet packages already installed mm -hmm. from this uh, project template. So we have uh, Microsoft.NET. Uh, Dot test dot SDK. We've got X unit, and then we've got X unit uh, dot runner dot Visual Studio. Yep. We need some additional uh, NuGet packages to allow us to do integration testing. Now I have that code all up and running, and I'm going to install them, and then I'll walk through what those are uh, in here. Now let's go to package manager console and this is a gotcha I'll, I'll I get burned on this every time I do this this default project yes. always defaults to the original project mm -hmm. so it will it will default to the web API so you want to make sure that you're pointing that uh, to your integration test because we want to install those NuGet packages with the integration test project so I'm going to install everything, and then we'll take a look at the packages that we, uh, that we installed. So uh, the first one is, and you can see it just came in and it's being stood, stood up, is Microsoft.ASP.NET dot, or ASP, ASP Net Core uh, MVC, mm -hmm. dot MVC which uh, most, when you do unit testing, you're, you don't need all of that right. uh, to be brought in, but well, I'll explain why you need that uh, for, for, the, for this type of testing. And then we also need Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.Diagnostics. And then the most important one that we need is the Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.TestHost. Mm -hmm. And that will allow uh, your integration test to stand up a, a hidden instance of okay. your web API project so that the test can actually hit it, but it actually doesn't bring it up in a browser. It kind of hides oh, it kinda cool. in, so in the background. So rather than publish the API and then call it from your integration test, you're basically creating a local version that gets stood up that you can call locally. Yeah, and it's, oh, that's kinda cool. it's just yeah. a small, yep. it's a small little host that just right. hosts your, your API, mm -hmm. and it lives as long as your tests live, right. and when, it's, when the tests are done, it, it shuts it down and okay, disposes cool. of it. Okay, so we have all of those dependencies, so we can hide that. Uh, just like I did in, my previous project in the previous video, I'm going to get rid of this unit test one mm -hmm. because one, it it uh, doesn't really have anything in there anyway, and I like to start out with a clean slate. So 
I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a new add a new class. So for the time being, I haven't really found that any that anyone has created a um, uh, X unit ASP.NET Core unit test template. Hmm. At least I haven't found it in here. So I, so I have to, uh, I'm going to create it myself. So I'm going to call it Albums uh, Integration Tests.cs. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, there's no convention for the naming of these. So I'm going to say Add. And I'm going to go out and get my trusted uh, uh, code, and I'm going to bring in a few things. So the first thing that I'm going to have is, and let me fix these uh, so we can see everything. Just make sure that we bring in those, those using clauses. So, so what we have here is we have two private uh, read-only properties. Mm -hmm. And one is of type HTTP client, and one is of type test server. So our tests have to have both. We have right. to have a client, we have to have a server. The client makes the HTTP call, and then the server does the work and sends back the response. And again, this is cool because you don't have to take the time to write a client exactly. to test the server. Yeah. So right. for lazy people like me, this is perfect. Or if your job is to just to write the API, yeah. why do you need to write a client? Yeah, and I don't want to. I don't want to spend weeks building out my unit tests. Right. And as I'm showing here, it's really easy to build these unit tests yeah. and use this these uh, built-in client and servers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go on to our next piece pieces of code and. Uh, I'm going to come in and uh, maybe I misspelled. Come on. Okay. Integration. Okay. Uh, let's fix this for the web hosting builder. So this just comes in and it's under hosting. Mm -hmm. So this constructor that I just brought in stands up and creates the server and the client mm -hmm. uh, properties. So what we're saying is server is a new test server and we give it a new instance of web host builder and what we what we give that west ho web host builder is we call a u startup and if you take a look that startup is actually the class from our web api project right and because that startup is what ASP.NET uses to stand up mm -hmm. and, and get all your services and, yep. and everything up and running for your, uh, for your ASP.NET project. And then the client is a client that's, that's generated off of the server because the client needs to know everything about the web API. Right. And the server knows all about itself because it actually has this, its API internally. Mm -hmm. So we generate that client and it already knows all the calls that it can do. So right. we don't even have to, to stand up and, and tell the client, here are all the APIs, here are all the, 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 uh, the verbs that go along with those APIs, and here's all the parameters that you can call. It just stands it up and mm -hmm. we're good to go. Cool. Okay. So the next piece of code is our tests. Now, now I'm going to bring in the first test and walk through that. So, so here is a test and we're, gonna, we're going to fix this so we, it references XUnit. Okay. And oh, we need to fix that because HTTP status code uses system.net and task 
uses another reference. So we're all good. So, okay. So this first test is we're going to test to see if we get the entire payload returned back to us with all albums mm -hmm. of the all album API call. And you can see that in here we have uh, inline data, which is a X unit uh, attribute that we can mm -hmm. decorate this, this test with. Yep. And we give it the verb that we're going to use. And that gets sent in to this method, which uh, it gets used with this HTTP request this message so creator. Cool. And so this message, this request message, has to know two things. It has to know the verb and the string that gets sent over. Mm -hmm. And that string that gets sent over is AP slash API slash albums. Right. Because the client already knows the base URL. Right. It's localhost colon some port. All we need to do is give it the uh, the segment mm -hmm. that's different from the base URL. And that's just this slash API slash albums. So that's our arrange part of right. our test. Now we need to act on the test. And what we're going to do is take that request and we're going to send it through the client to the server. So we, we say underscore client dot send asynchronously the request that we just created. And then we're going to wait to get the response back from mm -hmm. our test host, which is running our web API project. And then down in our assert, we're going to first say that we want to ensure a successful status code. So, so a successful a success status code is, I'm quizzing you. What is the status code? What's it's it? Okay. What's a what's two hundred? Two hundred. Yes. I set you up with a softball. <laughs> so we're going to make sure that that response can't wait gets to see the back. hard ones. Yeah. <laughs> so we're kind of doing a double assert. I want to show two different ways that we can check to see okay. if that if that uh, uh, return status code is uh, yep. successful. So you can use response uh, dot ensure success status code, and then you can say assert dot equal, and then you can just say the response status code is equal to. And what okay. you're testing here, you're not testing the data that comes back. I right? can. You can. But you're not doing that here. In this simple test. Right. You're I'm, just saying, if I call this, will it tell me it worked? Yes. And this is a simple test. Yeah. So I could make more advanced integration tests. Right. I could say, uh, and we'll take a look at that. Yeah, but without, next. without this, this is so cool because you don't have to go to the browser and start typing things, yeah. which then every time you do it, you have to go to the browser and start typing things. Yeah. I've also done this in Fiddler. Yeah. Which again, you can go in and and enter the 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 URL string, or whatever. Yep. In Fiddler. And the verb and send and, it over and, and see that it worked. Yeah. But that's kind of a one-off. Here, it's more permanent. You can run these integration tests over and over and yeah. over again. Yeah. And I can load all of these tests up into yes. continuous integration right. yeah. servers. Totally up. automated. Yeah, yeah, I can put this it is anywhere. So cool. My local servers, mm -hmm. and it can be run every time, anytime someone checks in code for this web API right. solution right. or project. All of these integration tests can be run to make sure if I hit this from the outside, are all my APIs right. correct? Yep. And if something blows up, I can. I'll probably I'll get an error code back with some kind of message. And that will alert someone. And then it should break something mm -hmm. running some unit tests yep. also. So I can say, oh, well, calling all albums broke. And then also, here's where I think the unit test that failed corresponds right. to that. And you can also, as part of the integration test, pass bad data yeah. and confirm that you get a. Not a, a 200. A, a, a maybe a 400. A 400 or, or a something. 500. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can, you can right, test it when you 
call it incorrectly, can, it doesn't yeah. work. I can test it for anything. I yeah. can test it for the 300 level response codes. I can, yep. I can do whatever I want. Very cool. Okay, let's take a look at one more unit test. And this one is a way to call, to send over an additional uh, property into your test. So you can see up here, I have an inline data. Uh -huh. It's using the get verb and I send over a one. Yep. So that one corresponds with an ID yes. on, the, on this uh, uh, method. And so I just say ID equals one and then I build my, uh, my HTTP uh, call string to use that uh, ID. So I say slash API slash album slash mm -hmm. whatever I send in for my ID. And I go through the same thing. Now, I could set up an assert that says, that checks to see if the ID that uh, I sent in through this method equals the ID that I get back from the response in the JSON payload. I yeah. could check to see that too. Yeah, but you more likely have that be part of the unit test of the code, right? I could, yeah. I could test because you could do it my both unit ways, test right. will also, if I build all my unit tests right, right, I'm calling all of those controller actions right individually right. in unit tests anyway. Right. So, and all I'm really testing here is to make sure that yeah. if I ping something from the outside, it, that is working right. correctly. Right, so, so the integration test is going to, uh, uh, is this a correct statement? The integration test will typically lean more towards assuming that if I call this service, Right, I'm assuming that it runs correctly and it's been tested correctly. It's going to send me stuff back. Am I getting back what I expect? Yeah, and now, and, yep. And then to make sure that the service itself does the things that are correct, it's really kind of the, the service's job to do that. The person that the wrote that. Job, so yeah. you might, I would expect the, the unit tests on the service to cover that, yeah. and this integration test to cover yeah. what happens when I call the service from the client. Well, and I mean, it's, it's not it written ripples. in stone, so, but so think about I build it so that every layer from the AP from the external API point back. Mm -hmm. So controllers, and then maybe some middleware, and then going all the way back to my entity framework, entity framework core repositories right. that actually are doing the the call and the retrieval of mm -hmm. data which then gets sent forward, everything is being tested. Right. So everything should kind of ripple forward. And if something breaks, it's going to break all the way. If something broke in my, all the way back in my Entity Framework core yep. layer, in my data layer using my repositories, it should break all the way through. Mm -hmm. So it just will prove that, that it does break or it breaks somewhere in the middle and I can see where along that path it broke. Right. Cool. But I just wanted to show because a lot of times people don't have never seen this type of testing, yeah. this integration testing. And you can add integration tests for the for the put, post and delete as well. Yeah. You can and do it's it. and it's actually working with the real live data? This is. Okay. But you can set it up you could mock it. You could mock it right. in the back end okay. too. Right. You could set up in the other APIs. Which you'd probably, I, I you'd don't probably want to do if you're going to run. Mm, yeah. So if, you if wanna, you're going to run integration tests on on CI, every time you check in code, your unit tests run, of course, and then your integration yeah. tests run. Yeah. And then uh, I would part use of mocks. what. Or even in your unit testing, you're inserting, updating, deleting yeah. into the real database. You probably don't yeah. want to do that as part of your no, test, I especially don't. since don't. you don't let anybody delete from the database. I, d I don't. So you'd have a bunch of bogus records yeah. that are in there, right? Or so. I have a bunch of records that are turned off that right. I would have to go back in. And so you'd either mock or bits. you'd be able to flip back and forth, be yeah. forth between a test database, yes. which might get emptied out and redone, yeah. although there's overhead with that. Yeah. Or you might just mock it. But that's the beauty easy. of all this. Sure. You can do what you want. Right. 
So for this test, I'm just showing how we actually do the integration mm -hmm. test and we're just going awesome. against the local database. Cool. So it's one more tool that you can put in your tool belt. Yep. Or testing. in your toolbox. Or your toolbox. Yes. <laughs> in your <laughs> Visual Studio toolbox. Tool box. Exactly. You have another testing tool. Yes. Right on. Yeah. Cool. So we're now two out of three done yep. in episode three. Yep. You're going to teach us some best practices from yeah. on how to do this better in real life. Hopefully. That's, that's my goal. <laughs> that's to, your promise. So to, I'm show, you to, it. to show all the scars I have <laughs> and, and what I do. Excellent. Okay. All right. We'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Bye.